three aspects that we get from the Word of God on reaction, the outcome, the results. And the first one, John 14, 23 and 24, is plain and simple. Is Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, and you'll find many people, Oh, I love Jesus. Jesus, my love. Jesus loves me. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. And, you know, I've had many people, Oh, I love Jesus. Jesus this. And the thing is, now they'll tell you, Judge not, least you be judged. Well, how can you judge somebody on that? Are they really telling the truth? I watch these reality shows and, you know, we thank God, thank you God, we praise God, and, we, you know, we got this, thank you God. And the thing is, are they sincere? Or are they not sincere? What does the Bible say? The conduct. Now, I'm not talking about salvation. Anybody can get saved. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I'm not talking about the simplicity of salvation. I'm talking about somebody who professes to love Jesus. And our upcoming president, I see all the, these, you know, pictures and, you know, okay, that's fine. But you can Photoshop. You can erase something and put what you want to put. It can be just said to lure the voters. Anybody can say anything. One of my first jobs was I worked at a used car sales lot. And I heard them say many things. I've dealt with used car salesmen. They'll say anything. Politicians. So, if a man love me, John 14, 23, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him, and make our abode with him. Okay, so, if you love Jesus, you're going to keep his words. You're going to try to the best of your ability to quote the scripture. To bring forth the scripture. And I'm not talking about your opinion. I'm talking about the word of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about the word of God. Okay. He that loveth me not. Keepeth not my saying. And the word which he hear is not mine. But the father which sent me. Alright so there are people who love Jesus. How do you know? What's their daily Bible reading? Do they read their Bible? Do they read the whole Bible? I'm not talking about people, oh, I just read the New Testament. I just got my daily Psalm. My daily proverb. Do you read from Genesis to Revelation? Do you study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs, needs not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth? Do you? Or are you one of them ones, money is the root of all evil. Judge not, least you be judged. And the other dozen so non-scriptural references, that are nowhere found in the scripture. Do you quote from the world or do you quote from Jesus? Do you read the Bible or do you read novels? And if you're going to keep this word, you're not going to deal with a modern Bible, a modern English Bible. You're going to stick with the King James 1611 Bible. And with all the people I've dealt with, and I've been in the prison ministry, I've seen them give up their modern Bible for a King James Bible. And I've been in churches where I tried working with them. I tried teaching what the Bible says and what their Bible, and they don't want to hear it. They don't get up and sing, 
Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because I have a Bible that cuts out what he says. I have a Bible that subtracts it. And when the Bible, when God, Jehovah, and Jesus, and the, the, the books of the Bible say, do not add and subtract. Your modern Bible does. You are not keeping the words of Jesus Christ. How about all the places where they remove what Jesus said? Like most of Mark 16. You're not keeping the word of Jesus. Going all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Well, that's cut out of your Bibles. That's what Jesus said. It's what I quote. And you get these people scriptural merchandise. Now, we got signs here in our house. And we put them up because we believe in them. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And we are. There are people that get that stuff. Love, faith, and whatever the other thing is. And they just buy it because they like it. They get it because everybody else has it. You know, put Christ back in Christmas. He was never there. So what they try to do is they try to buy something and they try to sell something because we're Christians. Uh, on the radio there, you know, come to us because we're a Christian organization. Really? Anybody can say they're Christian. Anybody. What do you do with the Word of God? Well, we're a Christian church. What do you do with the Word of God? What do you do with the Word of God? Do you read and study? Do you try to memorize it? Do you obey the commandments? Do you love everybody in your church? That's a commandment of Jesus. He says, love one another. They shall know that you're my disciples when you love others. You can't say you love Jesus and hate somebody in your church. So the first aspect is somebody says, I love Jesus. What about his word? And I'm telling you right now, no one's ever told you about your modern Bibles. You need to get away from those, those, those perverted Bibles. And getting a King James 1611 Bible. Well, you know, King James... Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, wait a minute. Now, see? You don't love Jesus. Well, I don't believe the King James... It is the Word of God. Look at the history. Look at the family tree. Look at the foundation. Look what it says and it doesn't say. What do you do... With the word of God. And I'm not bragging. I try to read the word of God every day. I missed a few days. Of weeks. When I was in the hospital this year. In September. So what I did is. I'm reading my daily reading. Right where I am today. And I just got into the book of Acts. And then a little while back. When I came home. I went to where I last read. And I've been reading that daily reading. So now I'm actually coming to Malachi. And I'm coming into Acts. I'm trying to pick up, which I already have. When I say, hopefully at the end of this year, I've read all the way through the Bible, I have. And I study. So if you love Jesus, you'll love the Word of God. You'll have the right Word of God. You'll have the right attitude about the Word of God. How about when the preacher preaches? Are you playing games on your phone? Are you talking? Are you drawing? Are you listening? Do you even have a Bible? When you go to, I, I've been places where, where they don't bring a Bible, and they never bring a Bible, and they never open the pew Bible. I've 
where they Sunday they throw the Bible in the back seat of the car and it ain't picked up to next Sunday. Do you mark the word? My daughter told me with my Bible, I got little pictures and, and you know I cut out and printed and put it in my Bible. She says there's times she likes to open up my Bible and just look at some of those pictures and the notes. Listen, I got coffee stains in my Bible. I've got tear stains in my Bible. I even got my blood in my Bible. I've got sweat in my Bible. I got notes. I got memories. Matthew 5, 18 and 19. For verily I say unto you, Jesus speaking, to heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law. Now the law is the Bible. The first five books Till, be, till all be fulfilled. So Jesus said the word of God is going to be fulfilled. Do you believe that? Do you believe the biblical doctrines for the Christian, for the world, and for the nation of Israel? Do you believe that it will all be fulfilled? That there is coming a day for the church, the rapture. There is coming a day of the seven year tribulation period, Jacob's trouble. And there is coming a time when the second advent in Lord Jesus Christ, he's going to gather Israel back up. He's going to give them a new heart, a new spirit. And they're going to be forever in their land with Jerusalem the temple and Jesus Christ the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and David in the Old Testament men and women will be there with the saints for a thousand year reign. And then there will be the great white throne judgment and those that are not saved have not obeyed God will be cast off into the lake of fire that burns forever. Then there's going to be new, the new Jerusalem, new heavens and new earth. Do you believe that? Now, I know that's not in the law but that's all one book called the Bible. I've heard some people say, well, I believe that, but I don't believe this. And I've heard some other nonsense things that they take out of the Bible, which is completely nonsense when you go scripture with scripture. And I even had a pastor fight me about, oh, I was like, oh, okay. So you reject the word of God. Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, Now, we all break the commandments. And there are more commandments than the ten. As I said before, we are commanded as disciples to love one another. How are you doing with that one? We are commanded in the New Testament to give an offering. We're not commanded to tithe. Given to the capability... That God has given us to give. How are you doing on that one? And shall teach men so. Alright, so you, you get somebody, a Sunday school teacher, a preacher, a scholar, an educator, or somebody at your Bible study, man, in the office in your home, and they get up and they're teaching you false doctrine. They're teaching things wrong with the Bible. False preachers, false teachers, false religions. Like the Jehovah Witnesses and they tell me, we don't believe Jesus is God. That's wrong. You're wrong. The Bible definitely says that Jesus Christ is God. And when I show them some of the scriptures that it says, they'll walk off my driveway. So he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. So if you break what God says, coveting, well, you know, vote for my, my, my person for who's ever running for whatever office. He's coveting your vote. That politician. Has he repented of coveting your vote? 
Has he said something in a campaign promise that he's not going to fulfill? Uh, did he repent of that? First commandment, put God first all the time. How, how's he doing with that one? How are you when you were a child? You were the perfect, most wonderful child ever outside of Jesus Christ. Oh, no? The Bible says, honor thy mother and father. There have been times that I had apologized to my mother and apologized to my dad. How I acted growing up. And I've taught my children respect their parents. So, but whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So, if you love Jesus, you'll love his word. If you want to be somebody in the kingdom, You've got to teach what the Bible says to teach. And I'm afraid in the Laodicean church age, many preachers and Sunday school teachers and Christians are going to lose out and be leased because they taught somebody something's wrong. Well, we know it's not Jesus' birthday, but then don't celebrate Sunrise service. You know what Jeremiah says about the sunrise service? Why not? The Christmas tree. You know what Jeremiah says about the Christmas tree? I had one church. I brought that up. And he skipped the entire chapter. I've had preachers tell me, well, I don't want to hear about it. That's your opinion. No, it's the Bible. Again, if you love his word, you'll keep his word. And we're running into religion here. Excuse me. One religion will say it's a pope. One religion will say it's Mary. One religion will say it's Allah. One religion will say sit cross-legged and, and ooga booga, whatever you do. That's not what the Bible says. There are people out there. In Matthew 23, 15. Woe unto you, scribes, Pharisees, hypocrites. That's Jesus speaking. Oh, don't call anybody a hypocrite. Jesus did. What would Jesus do? For ye compass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, he made him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, go in all the world. They are commanded, as part of their life in their church, they are commanded to go overseas on the missionary trip. And teach their Mormonism. And teach the Jehovah Witnesses. Jehovah Witnesses will go to your door. I have been living in this house in Daytona Beach, I don't know how long. Been years. I've never, never had a Baptist church come to my door. And at least once a month I get a Jehovah Witness. There'll be times, you know, I'm taking a nap, and my daughter say the Jehovah Witnesses came. And they come to your door, they're going to teach you the heresy of their religion which violates the scripture they don't love Jesus they break the commandments so if they are saved they're going to be leased in the camp. I'm not saying they're not saved I'm not saying Catholics are not saved I'm not saying Mormons are not saved but they will be leased and they don't love Jesus if they don't read and study the word and do what the word says and believe what the word says in John 1 1 it says Jesus is the word you can't say I love Jesus and I believe in Jesus and deny the virgin birth you cannot say I love Jesus and I believe in Jesus and say he's not God 
And then if you go out telling people, whether out of a pulpit, out of a podium, at the front door, wherever how you do it, you teach them one of the many ways of religion and education and science but not the biblical, not the Bible. You have raised a child of hell. There are people in churches I've been in, they believe things that they've been taught and they're wrong. I had one guy tell me about the King James Bible and all that. Well, I'll believe my footnotes in my Bible. If the footnote says it in my Bible, I'll believe it. Okay, well, I'm done. You're going to get to the point where I'm trying to help you, and you're not going to listening. You're not going to listen to reasoning. And you're going to believe foolishness. Let me ask you something. You know what false news is, right? Do you believe everything the newspaper says? I don't. But I believe everything the Bible says. And even if I don't understand it. I, I, I just read through Zechariah. You know, I thank the Lord that the promises that God's made to Israel are going to happen. Now, the world says Israel can occupy the land. The Bible says they own that land. And the owner is God. The world says, you know, transgenders and, and people who have same-sex relations and they don't know what sex they are, that's an abomination, according to the Bible. That's not what the world says. And there are churches that are wrong. They're teaching wrong. I'm talking about Baptist churches too. And I'm talking about Bible Baptist churches. We're all wrong. I say things that are wrong. And on that aspect. If I don't keep the word of God. And I lie against the word of God. I don't really love Jesus. And I am least. And anybody believes what I say that is wrong, I'm not setting them on a good path. So, if you're going to say I love Jesus, look at what you feel, what you do, what you study, and what you read about the Word of God, and which Bible you read. Be careful what you teach others. Be careful about the commandments. Now, I'm not saying, you know, works for salvation, and you keep the salvation. You'll be, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about your Christian walk. We're not under the law, but what? Just because we're under the law, it says, uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. i got to forget that. If you've committed adultery, what's that say your aspect of the Word of God? What's that say to keeping the commandments? Now, yeah, if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from, our, from all unrighteousness, okay. And then be careful what you teach others. God won't be pleased when you teach others falseness, lies. And I don't care if you don't believe it's falseness. I don't care if you don't believe it's a lie. If it's a lie, it's a lie. Now, I just hope that this will get, get you looking more into, praying more into your Christian walk. 